talking about the royalty in Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I told you I have this Norwegian book <coughs> with me, but he wrote, it came out here in, in, in autumn, 2011, mm -hmm. and he wrote about the Norwegian king. They have this summer residence where they spend a lot of time actually all during all the year to relax yep. and so on. And they put this space station inside the building and it was radiating 700 times more than normal. Yep. And no one would take responsibility how it got there, no one knew. And then they found out it was the biggest uh, mobile phone company in Norway, which is actually Scandinavian or actually perhaps even becoming worldwide. Yep. And now it's removed. But he got cancer, <coughs> he got heart trouble, he was yep. operated, and all his staff got sick as well. It was all there. And he actually was a king that was really serving as a king, yep. not trying to corrupt anything, but was really a, a, a real king. He's not the first one uh, that that has happened to, not the first. No. But it just confirms what we are Oh yeah, saying. yeah, it, it's happened. And, you know, when I go to countries and I talk, um, I, I often get a message in my hotel, usually a secret message, uh, saying, you know, we want to talk to you, and a big car turns up, and I, I jump in, and I think, well, someone's going to shoot me in the back of the head any minute now, and I end up in a palace or, or somewhere, and we have a, a very good discussion, um, and then I'm taken back. But uh, it, it's, there is a lot that the royals don't, do not know, that, that, you know, they're kept. And... <clears throat> Again, you're looking at uh, the destruction of a royal lineage because if the children are being microwaved, if they come up to the royals and they say, you know, you need extra protection and that they increase the power, what they're really doing is making the future generations very, very sick. Uh, or they can make them mentally retarded. So they cannot rule. And maybe, I don't know, somebody else wants to take over the country for whatever reason. I, I, you know, I can't be bothered with world domination, but some people may have a reason to take over the country um, and control it. I've been wondering for many years, what is it that is pushing pushing, pushing, pushing all these technologies. Then I talked to Professor Ole Johansson in, uh, from the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, and he said to me he was at a European meeting, where he, uh, a European commission, where he asked uh, what is the need for all these technologies. And then the European guy, he said to him, well, <coughs> that's probably the most intelligent question ever asked yeah. here. And then Ole Johansson, he said, well, what do you mean about that? There was no need. It was only to generate maximum profit. Mm. So it actually used as a cash cow to generate enormous amount of profit, but then again, of course, also to the surveillance stuff and all this. But when we talk about big corporate takeover, world takeover and so on, we have to look at big banks because there's a lot of money involved in this. And, and how come they can make all these commercial, uh, it's, it's full pages every day and people are becoming so much taken over. Um, Barry, what is your knowledge about how actually to mind control people, or how to control people efficiently with commercials? Do, do you have any um, expertise in that? How, the, how they might use different kind of, like, uh, how they can, how to say, uh, manipulate, manipulate the brain? The brain. Yeah. <clears throat> but there are different ways. Um, first of all, this, this industry now, uh, talking about money, uh, financially, this industry is now the most powerful on the planet. The mobile industry is the most powerful on the planet. Uh, it has so much money that it can even tell some governments what they will and won't do. It is a very powerful industry. On top of all of that, uh, it is an information gathering industry. So somebody is gathering all of the information. <clears throat> and certainly the Americans are gathering it because 
if you think of Google, that, that is an American-based company. And everything usually is on Google. People don't realize that even ordinary telephone calls are recorded and stored. Ordinary telephone calls. <clears throat> I mean, people like me, um, I would imagine my telephone here, there must be at least five different organizations listening to everything I say and watching me everywhere I go. So we're dealing with an incredibly powerful organization. <clears throat> now, in terms of... There are different reasons for entraining uh, somebody's brain. It could be just to experiment. For instance, we know that uh, 6.66 pulses a second going into the brain. That can cause sexual aggression. Um, we have a list, I have a list here. <clears throat> it may be the most comprehensive in the world now, I don't know. But uh, some of the things, you can change the heart, the sleep pattern, you can induce hallucinations, amnesia, uh, drowsiness, depression, uh, visual distortions, hearing distortions. You can, people will actually hear voices. It's called a auditory hallucinations. Uh, very easy to do. <clears throat> and if you go to a psychiatrist and say, I keep hearing these voices saying that, you know, you will end up in an asylum, uh, especially if the voices are telling you to do something illegal or criminal. <clears throat> Uh, and it's very easy. Auditory hallucinations are very easy. Uh, you can induce anger, manic behaviour. Uh, here we have, um, I haven't got my glasses up, auditory vis visual hallucinations I've said, um, irritability, the loss of ability to make decisions, um, and, and so they go on. There are quite a few of them here hyperactivity, especially with children, anxiety. But when you said lose <coughs> ability to take decisions, yeah. I remember in 2006 in Denmark, it was on the national radio, was just said once, <coughs> but it says that mobile phone radiation uh, disconnects the ability to take decisions. Oh, yes. It was never said again. Yeah, it does. Yes, it, it, it can lo lose you the ability to make decisions. But this was known, I mean, this document here, is published by 1976 uh, it was published here by the United States government there were some eight and a half thousand research papers by then uh, proving all of this <clears throat> military papers government papers experimental papers um, and they published it. They, they published it. And here is a list of all of the physical and mental illnesses you can get. Be quiet. Of all the illnesses you can get from microwaves at cell phone powers and Wi-Fi powers. So cell phone and Wi-Fi and in all of the illnesses you can get. I, I have a movie here, I don't know if you have watched it, but it's called Control Factor. Uh, it actually illustrates what you just told and, mm. and how it can be done, and it might be a little over-exaggerated, but today it's done wireless, and <coughs> you don't need to implant anything in people, yeah. you can just do it by frequencies. But, you know, the, some of the things that I find very strange is that so few people are able to see, connect the dots. Because I've been observing people, and I have since observed since 2003 when we started the debate, that people have become more and more disconnected. Mm. That they don't seem to function or think coherently anymore, and that's even a, a, a part of my control, you can say, if you can disconnect the thinking. The, <clears throat> the CIA actually patented some of these devices, patented them. Uh, uh, and I have the patent number somewhere. 
And the CIA and the Canadian government were taken to court once for this. It took 50 years, but they were taken to court. Um, and they lost by the people who said, you know, they have been experimenting on us. Uh, but like our government, uh, <clears throat> like our government, it takes about 50 years to take a government to court. Because by then, most people are dead. All the people who made the decisions are retired or either dead. The victims are usually dead. Uh, and there's very little compensation. And people are not really interested, 50 years on, anyway. But <clears throat> they have both this government and the Canadian government, and probably the Americans, they have a very good delaying strategy for about 50 years to take them to court. Doesn't that mean that we are we are reaching the point where the 50 years now? <laughs> so if you look back from the 60s, oh, yes. then, yeah, it's, it's about yeah. time now. There was a case um, very recently, and I was involved in this, that they wanted to use me. Um, just a simple. When I was in the military in the very early 60s, uh, a notice came round inviting all young fit. We were all young and we were all fit personnel to take part in flu injections. They wanted to give us a flu injection so we wouldn't get the flu in the military. Um, and you were offered a weekend in London on full pay, an extra weekend off in London. And I thought, oh, this is, sounds good, I'll have some of this. But my commanding officer read it and tore it up and told me not to be so stupid. But that was in the 60s and only two years ago the survivors took our Ministry of Defence to court 50 years on because they were nothing to do with flu. It was all sorts of viruses and chemicals and they wanted to see. They needed lots of young people that they could experiment on, young, fit, healthy people, and where best to get them from than the forces. <clears throat> And they wanted to see what would happen. Most of them died. The survivors that still had cancers and viral infections got the Ministry of Defence to court uh, and they won. But again, there were only a few survivors. <laughs>